Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're a show that broadcasts from the Think Tech studios in beautiful downtown Honolulu in the Pioneer Plaza every Thursday at 2 o'clock. Uh, we spend about 30 minutes uh, discussing and interviewing successful individuals and companies in Hawaii. There are challenges of doing business in Hawaii like there are in most places in the country. Uh, but there are successes here that have gotten around some of the challenges, some of the regulatory environment, some of the taxes, and they have made, made successes out of it. Uh, we also have organizations that help support small business in Hawaii. And today we've probably got the premier small business organization that supports small business in Hawaii is the Small Business Administration. Uh, Jane Sawyer has been a guest uh, in the past. She had her own show for a while. Uh, she's constantly out in the public. And I want to welcome Jane Sawyer, who is the district director for the SBA here in Hawaii. Jane, welcome back to the show. It's good to see you. It's good to be here, Reg. Thank you. you. Know, it's always great to have you. You have such a great story to tell. Um, and I know for some people, they already know about the SBA. But mm -hmm. why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and what the SBA does here locally. Okay. Um, the U.S. Small Business Administration is an independent federal agency and we work with small businesses, all kinds of small businesses across the country, but my district includes Hawaii and Pacific region, so we're in American Samoa, we're in Guam, some of the Pacific affiliated islands as well. Which is uh, one of the biggest geographical districts in the right. country. Right. Heck of a lot of water, but <laughs> it's one of the biggest and most culturally diverse anywhere in the country. True. Um, and it is a very challenging environment to run a small business and run it successfully, but it's also, we are a small business area. That's uh, what keeps it interesting and keeps our culture alive, it keeps our communities going. Um, but SBA helps those businesses get started, grow, create jobs, prosper, and we do that by providing capital access, assistance with government contracting, and then consulting, training, and technical assistance. And so that small businesses can kind of grow beyond their wildest dreams. You know, and you, you touched on it, but we've got a very large percentage of all businesses in Hawaii as defined as small business. And mm -hmm. last I heard, it's what, like 97%? It's 97, 98%. Yeah, and depending on whose definition you're using. <laughs> right. It, you know? it, it mm -hmm. can, you've got different definitions out uh -huh. there, but, um, but no matter how you slice and dice it, there's an awful lot of small businesses. And those small businesses provide most of the employment. Yes. Yes, both uh, current employment, net new jobs, self-employment. So it's a really big influencer on what happens in our state economy. And uh, a lot of people even, you know, have several different jobs or may have work as an employee and then also have a small business on right. the side. Right, well, uh, Kind of you, dealing with cost of, cost of living here and then well, cost exactly. of doing business as well. You, know, you just hit the nail on the head. I mean, sometimes you got to do what you got to do in mm -hmm. order to make it work here in Hawaii. And, and a lot of small businesses and a lot of employees have to wear multiple hats and have mm -hmm. different sources of income to make it work here. Yes. yes. You know, I think I was just reading in today's paper that uh, we've got one of the highest, the highest, mortgage debt to income ratios in the country. Mm -hmm. It's four to one. Mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and on the mainland, the, the average nationwide is about two to one. So mm -hmm. for every $100,000 in income, two to one is 200,000 in mortgage debt. But we're at four hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's that's tough when you've got it's that kind tough. of debt just to, to have a place to live mm -hmm. on top of everything else. You've got to have that diversity. Yes, uh, which is also a good reason why we got to keep small business healthy in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's where Definitely. you come in. Definitely. So we try to have as uh, much influence as we can uh, on that by offering a, a wide range of programs because we help small business owners and entrepreneurs, the CEOs of these companies, every step of the way. So from getting started or pre-business, when they're just kind of thinking about their idea, looking at what I can do, how, why I want to do this, why I'm going to invest my time and my own personal treasure, mm -hmm. as well as looking for other people to potentially invest. What am I going to do and how am I going to sustain that, make it better, and uh, provide a product and service that people are going to want. And, you know, so basically from soup to nuts, I mean, you're, you're mm -hmm. able to help people determine whether or not that 
having a small business is right for them. Mm -hmm. And if they decide to, then you can help them and coach them through that process. And then after they're up and running, you can actually help them grow to the next level. Right. A lot of people, you know, in starting out, one of the things they really need is a little bit of training, technical assistance to see that they're really approaching it objectively, that, you know, the business startup idea is truly feasible. And we can help people who are looking at purchasing a franchise, buying an existing mm -hmm. business, starting from scratch. Um, how do you do a feasibility study? How do I put a business plan together? It, I'm thinking I know what it's going to take to do this, or I've worked in this industry so much I can do it all, but the greatest chef may not run the best restaurant. He may not really have a handle on so many things that need to go in there. You know, handling employees, the hiring, the firing, the pay scale. Um, Dealing with uh, the uh, bankers and the attorneys uh, and the so accountants. It, yes, accountants. <laughs> They're definitely the worst. No, <laughs> but uh, so it's it's a complex issue, and and even if your artistry in, as a chef or your design work or your creativity uh, as say an architect or designer, whatever is is going to carry the day you still need to have those business skills behind you. And studies have shown that that experience in training, technical assistance, um, putting that work into developing the skills is going to help propel that business to greater success. Absolutely, and, and knowing that maybe you need these skills for the business to be successful, and maybe you don't quite have them, that, that can lead you to go out and find somebody who does. Mm -hmm. And you've got training programs that help people identify what's missing and, and how to complement and hire and bring mm -hmm. people on to do that. Right, um, we have several different areas and looked at um, you know funding and helping create um, partners in the community who can help you. We work very closely with the University of Hawaii through the Small Business Development Center network. Right. We have a network here in Hawaii, we have a network in American Samoa, and one with the University of Guam in the Pacific. So, but these organizations, they have trained consultants who work free confidential consulting for small businesses. Um, they've worked with companies consistently, continuing counseling as the business grows. They help them develop financing proposals, both for investors, for bank loans, um, from anywhere from you know several thousand for working capital. They'll help evaluate their financials, train them in how to analyze their financials because so many small business owners don't pay attention to to the money piece. I bet you see that a all, lot with your customers. Yes. That, yeah. uh, or they've ignored one piece of it that has a critical impact. They help some businesses. One, for example, one one small business had been a going concern, good good employees, but even with a lot of solid work, weren't understanding why they weren't really seeing that money in the bank. They helped evaluate their financials, um, their results, and their projections, and help them find money they were kind of misplacing inside their organization. They ended up being able to buy a building, to expand, mm -hmm. to get the latest equipment, so now they're running a state-of-the-art shop that they own and are making money and keeping money well, in the bank. That's a success story. So that's then. a that's real good. success story with our Hawaii Small Business Development Center network. Well, and you know these SBDCs, Small Business Development Centers, are actually they're physical locations. They're yes. they're they're all around Hawaii and, mm -hmm. and they're also on Guam and American Samoa. And so mm -hmm. there's there's physical locations that people can actually make appointments and go in and meet with them. Right. You know they will meet with you at their location. For example, on Oahu, we have the center is located at the Manoa Innovation. Center. They've got very talented consultants there who can meet you, will come out to your place of business and evaluate. Um, we've also got the Women's Business Center, which is the Patsy Mink Center uh, uh, for business That's and right leadership. Downtown. Right downtown. And they also go out in the community and work with us on a lot of different training. I think they're even starting to launch my business program for newer businesses and pre business coming up in the next week. But that's been a terrific program too, both in teaching leadership skills, business skills, getting started, taking your business to the next step. So perfect. And even though they are a women's business center, they will train men, you know, um, 
they will train partners going into business so that you really both have the same perspective and what you need to know to get your business going right. and off to the right start. And sometimes it can be an eye-opening experience. I mm -hmm. mean, a lot of people don't realize how complicated and how many moving parts. I mean, just think of all the rules and regulations, licensing, Department mm -hmm. of Labor, taxation. Um, there's all kinds of issues. <laughs> not just product related, but right. just regulatory related. And mm -hmm. people don't realize how complicated it can get. Right. And very, very often, you know, it's, I mean, they can come in um, bite-sized pieces, so to speak. You can get your business started and you don't have to have employees at that point. But when you do get to the point where you need mm -hmm. to hire employees, there's a whole other set of rules That's that you right. need to take a look at. So people should be looking and once you make the commitment to get in to business, or you're even a serial entrepreneur, his path may, that path may take you in different directions. You need to keep an eye on your industry, an eye on business internally, an eye on the market all around you. So it's great to establish these consulting relationships so you have somebody else who's helping advise you. Exactly. And it's always nice to have a second set of eyes that's got some experience. I mean, mm -hmm. you may, as you, you know, the analogy is that you may be the best chef in the world and right? be able to cook the best meal, but it's good to have somebody that you are comfortable talking to to help. You know, just educate you on some of the things that you don't know. Mm -hmm. and, and that can happen any stage of the business, as I said. We have a special class that's been getting tremendous results. It's called our Emerging Leaders mm -hmm. Initiative. And we're recruiting right now for that, uh, for our 2018 cohort. This program is for existing businesses um, and for the CEO, really to make sure that they have the right kind of tools for decision making and fact based decision making not yep. just I feel this way today or my friend told me but looking at examining and analyzing assessing their own business operation so they can say okay if I'm if I'm here at point A and I need to get to point C what's that path going to look like and when you know I I need money I need people how are we going to plan to get there what do I need to do well, it's a great series it is it is and I've been involved with that uh, emerging leaders uh, group, the whole cohorts, and, and have been able to speak to them a little bit and get involved in, in evaluating some of the business plans. And it's an impressive group of people, and it's mm -hmm. competitive. Yes, yes. You know, not you don't take everybody into the program. There's a, mm -hmm. a process that you vet them a little bit, and, and you got to apply <laughs> and then get accepted to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a great program. Yeah. Now, how long is it? it it's it runs for about 13 weeks. Yeah. With the class uh, meets every other other every other week and we bring in experts from the community there is some homework to do but you get out of the the class the course what you put into it we have CEO meetings on the off weeks we try and do industry groups but you are really using your business as a case study and the whole goal the objective of the course is to put together a plan mm -hmm. so that you're going to take your business to the next level and we keep track of this will be our seventh or eighth year that we have been doing this in Hawaii and we've had some very very impressive results out of the class each year we survey the graduates to see how they're doing and they've been developing are uh, growing their business at kind of like four times the rate of their peers in the private sector and what's so, really neat Jane is it the camaraderie that develops mm -hmm. among this group as they go through the program they really become a sounding board as the companies grow and expand and they can talk to each other and they collaborate going mm -hmm. forward. It's a great program and uh, we're going to have to go on break here okay. in just a second but um, you are, you got a cohort coming up so is there right. a way for somebody It'll, to find out more information? They about should how they call can our office, um, there, it would be just to call us at 541-2990 and any of the staff will be able to help you with the information. There's a one page application form to fill out and then there'll be some interviews and some discussion what your goals are what you want to accomplish you need to be the CEO or COO of the company you need to be willing to come to all the classes you need to have, have at least one employee besides yourself and we look at an income range because we want you to be you know serious about doing this so your annual revenues have to hit at least that 350 to 400 thousand dollar level on up to several million and we'll consider all of that we look at we've had bakers and con 
contractors and architects. We've had people, engineers, come in from the Big Island every other week for this class, so they've really invested. We've had um, food producers from the neighbor islands coming in. So Papa Lock was part of that. I mm -hmm. see them on TV. They've yes. done very well. They are doing very well. Um, Terry Salton from Salton Ventures and Accelerate mm -hmm. UH. We've had Byron Gu from the Tea Chest. We've had Papa Lock. We've had Ali'i Construction. Mike Chun mm -hmm. was in one of our first mm -hmm. cohorts. Diamond Head Electric. So the list, it's about, we get about 15 to 16 students every year. So we have a good group of about 90 really strong CEOs who are part of our network let's, now. Let's take our break and then we're going to come right back and we're going to get right back into this. But this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're here today with Jane Sawyer, who is the district director for the SBA here in the Pacific region. Mm -hmm. So we'll uh, be right back in about 60 seconds. I said I could play, so any chance to play at all, you know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, that's how we do it. This guy looked familiar. He calls himself the Ultra Fan, but that doesn't explain all this. Why? Why? He planned this party. Planned the snacks, he even planned to coordinate colored shirts, but he didn't plan to have a good time. Go, go, go. Now you wouldn't do this in your own house, so don't do it in your team's house. Know your limits and plan ahead so that everyone can have a good time. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense. Welcome back. This is Reg Baker, Business in Hawaii. We're here this week talking with Jane Sawyer, who is the District Director for the Small Business Administration here in Hawaii and Guam and uh, American Samoa. <laughs> so it's a huge area, a lot of water, as, as Jane explained, which means a lot of travel time when she goes around to these different places. So it's a tough job, but mm -hmm. I, I know you, you're doing really, really well at it. Thank you. One of the, um, you know, the, and I, I know that the SBA doesn't make loans. There's mm -hmm. no big pot of cash over right. there that the, that the uh, SBA passes out. Mm -hmm. But you do get involved in helping with the funding process. And yes. Can you explain that a little bit? Sure. Um, we've been out of the direct loan business for a while now, um, but we do work with most, well, all of our local banks, many credit unions to provide capital to small businesses. And the way that that works, we've got a couple of different types of loan programs. and. You know, it used to be a lot of red tape, take forever to do, but it's not quite like that anymore. It can be very fast, a lot of it can be done electronically. It depends on what you're looking for, what type of loan you need, but all the banks will participate in our guaranteed loan program. So what that means is we help the bank mitigate the risk of working with a smaller business, whether it's a riskier type of business, a newer business, a new project for a business, maybe um, a business owner doesn't meet all the specific underwriting criteria that a bank will have. They can appeal to SBA for a guarantee on that loan. So we can guarantee anywhere from 50 to 90 percent depending on the type of loan. We can do lines of credit, we do um, working capital loans, we do um, acquisition loans, all different kinds of things, and anywhere from, you know, a few thousand dollars all the way to several million. Yeah, and the importance of that can't be overstated. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a lot of times businesses, particularly when they're just starting out, um, are not proven. Right. You know, they don't have a lot of history. And so the banks tend to be a little leery of that because they, they're primary interest is making sure they get repaid so that mm -hmm. they can make more loans down the road to other people. And if there's a little bit of a higher risk in there that they're maybe they're comfortable with, that's where they come to you and you, the SBA can take mm -hmm. a look at it 
and give the bank some comfort that they're providing a guarantee mm -hmm. uh, that that money will be paid back. Right. And, so, and most of the banks here um, do most of the decision making. They make the decision on the loan. So we usually encourage a small business owner who's considering this to do some prep work mm -hmm. and know before he goes into the bank kind of what he's looking for, what he's looking at. Um, we recommend you establish, you know, um, a relationship with a uh, banker at your bank of choice and that you, you can use one of our resource partners, the Women's Business Center, Mink Center, um, the Hawaii SBDC, check out SCORE, some of these other programs, or even go to an SBA resource day. We send one of our lending specialists out to the banks in the community mm, and right. to meet for a confidential one-on-one, 30-minute, -on -one, no obligation kind of meetup to talk about how do I get financing or what do I need to do to get a loan. Um, we'll talk as SBA, we can just tell you what you need to do or how to put together a proposal for the bank just to help you feel more comfortable to go in and make that ask and present your business in a favorable light. So you want to help predispose the bank to say yes, of right? Of course, and having that relationship with the bank before you really need to ask for the money is, is one mm -hmm. of the key components. Right. You know, they kind of joke about you don't go to the bank when you need the money, you go to the bank before you need it so you can build that relationship mm -hmm. and then ask for it when you've got a plan and it can show what you need it for. Right, and that's, a, that's the other thing about taking some training and technical assistance as you get into business so you understand your financial reports and you understand you know when you look and read you know um, you, your statements and even as you make projections of where you're going to need the money before you need the money mm -hmm. um, or what perhaps those projections are telling you in terms of your potential for growth um, so you're making the decision at the right point because you at some point in the life of your small business, you will need money. That's and, nice and to have that set up before you get to that point. Mm -hmm. Now, we've talked a lot about the training and some of the different programs. We talked about you know, some of the facilitation you can do to help mm -hmm. businesses get loans. But there's a, a big piece of what you do that is exciting to me. Mm -hmm. And I, I really like the awards program that uh -huh. the SBA gets involved in. And, um, and, you, and, and can you just give us a little history? I mean, they've been doing this for a long time. Right, right. I, I think that you know, along with our, our mission of um, helping small businesses start and grow, we also want to increase public awareness of the contributions Absolutely. that small businesses make to our economy. I think they too often get a bad rap or are left holding the bag for anything that might be economically uncomfortable, you know, but small businesses really are big contributors, not only to our local economies, but the national economies, and then also to um, just the quality of life anywhere, because that's what makes our communities vibrant. So one of, one of the programs I've always just loved at SBA is the annual SBA awards that have become part of National Small Business Week. So for um, over 45 years, we've had National Small Business Week, and here in Hawaii for probably more than 35 years, SBA has been recognizing and honoring the top small businesses from across the state. It's a pretty rigorous program for qualification and even more so making, you know, for an award or an honor um, in, for a small business. But we recognize a small business person of the year from each of the islands and from those candidates um, we select a small business person of the year for the state of Hawaii. Um, now they have to be nominated for this. It's, right. it's not as if the SBA just goes out and finds these right. people. I mean, there's got to be people in the community that actually will nominate. And you right. ask for these nominations. Yes, we have, we look at several several criteria. It's actually a really long, involved process. It puts we put a lot of resources. You participated <laughs> almost as long as I have. So, um, and been a winner on several occasions for our advocacy awards. So we. We recognize small business owners, we recognize a young entrepreneur, we recognize small business exporters because they bring so much and bring more revenue, more funding into our economy. Um, we recognize family owned businesses, but the nominations are generated out in the community by business organizations, many, many bankers, because we do for the Small Business Award.
awards, we ask, you know, we're looking for staying power. We're looking for innovativeness of the product or services. We're looking at increases in sales and annual revenues, how they use that money and where they're investing, reinvesting that money. So we're looking for growth in that area. Um, we're looking at, um, you know, uh, growth employees, in employees yeah. and job job yeah. creation. Sometimes, you know, we find out some of the wonderful things that people are doing to train their employees, to make their employees more valuable, to kind of build that Ohana feeling. And we've just had tremendous stories. We've even, and with our program, some of our key awards compete at a regional level and national level. And I'm really proud to say that we've had a lot of, you know, people are always surprised that, you know, from this little sand and surf island out here that we have some terrific small business winners. Yeah. We've had three to f three national small business persons of the right. year. That, mean, that means like number the, one in the entire country. In the country. Yeah. Last year we had um, Garrett Marrero and his lovely wife Melanie, the, the um, owners of Maui Brewing, who swept the national title. And uh, we've also had um, Tan Lam. Uh, now with, uh, he had uh, Ballet Sandwich and Bakery, and now he owns Latour. He's grown that from a little business. Uh, he was once the Young Entrepreneur of the Year when he started with a little bakery and a sandwich shop in Chinatown, and now he has the beautiful bakery and all those wonderful breads and, and pastries that you'll find at Whole Foods and, and everywhere across the state. Uh, yeah, and we've been very fortunate to take a number one spot a number of different times, but we've also had a lot of people go in and end up in the la in the top three or four too yes, you know, yes. I mean, we, for a, a, a state our size mm -hmm. we've got very good reputation uh, mm -hmm. representation mm -hmm. at the national level well, I think it just shows the caliber of the local entrepreneurs and the local businesses um, because they do they continually overcoming adversity you know the mm -hmm. changes and the fluctuations in our economy looking at some of you know the cost of doing business here just makes them so resilient. And uh, it's been just a, a really a great place to hear wonderful stories. We'll be starting to come out with uh, this year's award winners very soon. We, we take them from the nomination process and we have a team of about 12 judges who go in there and objectively score the nominations. Then we have to pass them through clearances. It's not an so, easy process. No, it's not an easy process. It's very challenging because you're reading about people who have done some amazing things mm -hmm. against mm -hmm. uh, all odds. And, and trying to figure out which one is better than another, but they're all good. Mm -hmm. It's tough. Yeah. This, this year's Small Business Person of the Year for the state of Hawaii has overcome much of adversity himself um, in starting businesses, not necessarily at the best time, having some of them, you know, fail, picking himself up and mm -hmm. starting again. He's a veteran, but he's also... Um, picked up uh, underutilized land and turn it into a very, very productive go business. Go veterans. It's go veterans, <laughs> you know. So I think people will be really enthused That's to good. hear his story. Now we got about less than a minute left. Oh, okay. So, um, but we've got some luncheons that's going to right. be uh, recognizing these winners, mm -hmm. and they're on different islands. And so, right. could you just quickly because tell us? We the have a, we work with the chambers of commerce and other organizations um, across the state. We'll be starting. Out with our winners on uh, the uh, on Kauai on April 19th. Okay. We moved to Maui on April 26th, and they'll be doing that's just before National Small Business Week, which comes up the 29th of April to May 4th. Our statewide, our annual statewide luncheon where we'll bring in all the winners together will be here in Hawaii. Um, we put that on with Hawaii Business Magazine, our media sponsor, May 4th at the Hawaii Prince. May 4th. So Mark your calendar, save the right. date. So the last couple of weeks of April and the first week of May. That's going, going to be a, a lot of activity. Yeah. And then we'll go back to the Big Island um, on later in May to wrap up with the Very winners good. over there. Super, so super. we've well, got some great stories to tell. So you hopefully watch for Hawaii Business and watch for our, uh, our website. We'll be coming out. Uh, 
um, we're starting to tweet some of these stories and information Super. links about the, our winners very soon. All right, Jane. It was. Uh, I wish we had more time. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, we we need to make this a more regular event. I'd like to know? do that. So, so. Uh, but you've got a you've got a trip coming up. You're heading to Washington. Heading here, to Washington. Yeah, this yes. afternoon. Yes. So I'm going to let you go so you can catch your plane Thank and you won't you. be late. And uh, mm -hmm. we'll catch you when you get back. Great. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 uh, from the ThinkTech studios in downtown Honolulu. Thank you to the ThinkTech staff for doing a great job as always. And until next week, aloha.